Dear friends, welcome back to Edioax. In this video, we are going to discuss how to collect data for designs. If you are not subscribed our channel yet, please subscribe and click the bell icon. You will get a regular updates on our videos. As you all knew, the collection of data from different sources will help us to frame the design requirements. Data collection is a primary thing one need to do before starting a new design. There were n number of ways to collect data. Let us see one by one. Number one, location map, key plan, and site plan. A site plan for the proposed site with its surrounding neighborhood details can be taken from a Google Map or through a Google Earth. And for the larger sites, even you can try in OpenStreetMap websites. Land use maps, ward maps, and survey maps of the particular site can be downloaded from the respective development authority websites. Even if the site is irregular and it was composed of more polygons, then you can go for a topo mappers. With the help of Theodolite survey, they will do the survey and give the details of the site, including its topography, vegetation, and other existing structural details. The sources for the location map, key plan, and site plan are Google Maps, Google Earth, OSM, OpenStreetMap websites, land use maps, ward maps, survey maps, and through the site analysis. And number two, we have building height and its volume. The local body development regulation has to be followed to get the details of permissible building height as well as the allowed build up area in that particular site, which will give you the volume of your built environment. And number three, we have a requirement of the buildings. There are n number of building typologies. As an architect, we cannot freeze building requirements based on the standards alone. We must do a literature study and a case study to identify the requirements of the building. And at the same time, we have to choose a literature study and a case study based on our proposed site area. This will help. Otherwise, a larger or a smaller case studies comparing to your proposals may give you a wrong data for your proposals. And number four, we have standards for the building services. Any building design should follow its local guidelines for the various types of building services they incorporated. Time service standards and development regulation guidelines of the proposed area will give you the fire escape norms, plumbing services norms, duct sizes, number of toilets, overhead tank sizes, sump sizes, rainwater harvesting methods, septic tank sizes, norms for physically challenged, electrical services, the location of transformers, duct sizes, generator room and meter room, size of lifts and number of lifts, staircase and corridor widths, parking numbers and sizes of parking, guidelines for open spaces in and around the building. These were mentioned in the standards. And number five, we have facade treatments. Coming to its elevation, you should look into the context of the place. You should check for the local design elements and redesign them differently with your creativity. Facades can be treated with wooden cladding, glass panel and stone cladding, terracotta claddings, stone cladding, tile cladding, metal cladding, jolly works, and even you can play with the colors. And finally, we have other factors, design constraints and choice of new materials. Design constraints like the location of existing trees, street lamp posts or electrical posts, transformers, etc. And choice of new materials and its construction techniques needs to be documented before considering those for the design. Conclusion Before starting any new project, you have to get all the data as mentioned in this video. Thank you.